All right, so <laughs> speaking of plans, not following through the way you expect them to, I came back and started filming once I got my embroidery floss. I got some red, and I was sewing around, and in the middle of it all, our electricity went off, everything went off, and when it came back on, that portion I had started filming was gone. So, fortunately, I hadn't done, I mean, anything extraordinary. All I did was um, get some red embroidery floss and just did a running stitch all around the edge and here on the spine. So, you know, no big deal, just, you know, just a running stitch all the way around and that's all I've done. Now, um, I wanted to tone this down and um, I wanted it to be a little antique -y. <laughs> it was a little too stark next to this so a mixture that I like to put together because I like the color that it comes out is I get some instant coffee and I also get some Thai tea because Thai tea has a lot of orange in it and it, between the, the coffee and the Thai tea, I like the color that it produces. And I'm just going to put a wash of that. I have it here in my little jar. I leave the, the Thai tea leaves because when it dries, it leaves like little splotchy marks, which I like. I like anything that looks, you know, messy and dirty. And <laughs> So I'm just going to... put this on there and the reason I like these colors is to me it resembles um, rust between those two colors so I know some of you are going no don't do that that's okay that just means you're involved <laughs> we want you to be involved Those little black spots you're seeing there is the tea leaves. And I may or may not go over the colors. I may want the colors to stay bright. So maybe I won't even put the mixture on the actual colors. So they won't get muted down. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I like that. So if you like the color of rust, but you don't like the process of rusting, then make yourself a little concoction of any kind of cheap um, instant coffee and go to your local Asian market and buy some Thai tea and you are set to go. You will not have to go get a tetanus shot to get this done. And while you're doing this, you could have made yourself a little Thai tea. My favorite cold drink. Now, I don't know what color this is going to show up on the monitor. Because I know on my monitor, it's not looking very rusty. But here it does. Mm, excuse me, I got something in my eyeball. <sighs> now, this is going to be kind of tricky. I might have to paint over that whole thing. Maybe. We'll see. 
Although I'm not crazy about the pink. It might actually look a lot better. <laughs> if I do um paint over it. You know I am cuz I'm not I'm not crazy about pink. Especially when you're going for a more rustic look. Let's just go over it and see what happens. Oh yeah, much better. It looks red now. Excellent. I like it better. Okay. Disaster averted. Now it looks the color of the floss. Alright, so I'll let that dry, and then I'll decide if I'm going to do the interior, or if I'm just going to leave it that way. I'll probably end up doing the interior also. So, I'll let that dry down, and then we'll flip it over, and we'll do the other side. Alright, alrighty. Okay, so I went ahead and put the um, the tea and coffee concoction <laughs> um, on the inside. So that has really um, aged that up and toned down that, you know, that um, white color that was also inside. The outside has come out really cool. I added a little bit here to kind of make it look a little more distressed. I like how that came out, so I'm going to put a little bit around the other edges also. Let me mix up my little concoction here. Oops. Well, there, it's going to age real nice right there already. <laughs> oh, what a mess. What a mess, Rosemary. Okay, so I'm going to put it around all the edges and just kind of let it sit there. And just let it do its thing. And make it look like it got wet, you know, sitting down on a table or somewhere. And so I don't want it to look nice and tidy necessarily just want to build some of that up We'll see what that does. We'll let that dry. And see if it has the look that I'm going for. If not, well, we'll just put another layer. I have a whole big jar full. Okay, so we'll let this one dry again and see what else we need to do once that gets. 
Okay, so I like the way this dried. <clears throat> it gives it a really um, old feel to it. I'm liking how it feels. And I got one of my little pieces of um, rusted fabric, this design I had made, and I just put it down with a little bit of fabric tack. So the next stage is to get our encaustic piece attached to this. There's so many different ways to do it, but I decided to punch a little hole on each corner with my crocodile and do the same here on the top. And then um, about a half an inch above and below each one of these holes, I put another hole. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to try it, it may not work, I'm going to use some sari silk to tie these. But um, if that doesn't work, well, you know, there'll be the next option. I'm not sure what that is. But before we do that, let's put some glue. Or, you know, I'm going to do both. I'm going to do some glue, some double stick, so it will stick while it's drying. And then try to use the sorry silk to... Um, To tie it down it'll be um, decorative but it will also um, hold all of this down while the glue is drying and then everything should be pretty stabilized so let's get some of this around the edge and in between between the tape and if that tie um, doesn't work using it with the um, with the sorry stick we can always do something else now now I'm going to have to hold this up because I need to line up so you probably won't be able to see what I'm doing. I'm trying to use the light to line up, line up my holes as best I can. That looks right there, looks kind of sort of okay. <laughs> Let me get some pins to see if I can line this up down here. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yay. Okay, I'll push that down. Okay, so now oh, this is going to work in my head, but I'm not sure if it'll really work. Whoa, hello, something just fell. My basket with my embroidery thread. Okay, so the plan. <laughs> now, you know, if you guys have worked with um, Sorry Silk, some of these things are really old. And when you try to use them or tie knots or anything, they tear. So we'll see if this is going to cooperate or not. I just won't pull too, too tight. Because really the glue is going to keep it down. Then after I'm all done, I'll see how long I want to keep these. Or if I want to cut them. That. Alrighty, now I'll we'll do the next one.
Now I could have used really anything. If you have like um, thin pieces of leather that would look pretty. You could have just used some um, wax linen. You could have gone ahead and used just the uh, embroidery floss that we used before. Or just another piece of fabric. Oops, wrong way. Again, I'm not going to try to pull too tight. I put this down with um, brackets and on the corners. I've used, um, oh gosh, really pretty much everything. I even used some screws. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to have to look at this for a while, see how short I want these. If I want to put a bead of some kind, you know, I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet. But I'll come back with my final thoughts of how I'm going to do the front. And then it'll be done. I'll be right back. Okay, so all I did was trim down the sari silk, and I think I'm going to call this done. Unless something just pops in my head before I mail it out. But I would say that this is ready to go on its maiden voyage <laughs> to the next creator for them to put some pages in here. And uh, I kind of sort of like the way it came out. What do you guys think? I like it. All right. I'm excited to get something in the mail that I have to put the pages into. I'm really looking forward to this. This is so exciting. All righty. Um, I'm going to go pack it up and send it off. <laughs>